In the heart of China's largest desert, a mirror of blue water now glimmers where death once ruled. Just 25 years ago, this was a wasteland. Cracked earth, lifeless trees, and silence broken only by the wind. The lake had vanished. Then China did something the world called impossible. Over two decades, it poured more than 10 billion yuan and 9 billion cubic meters of water into this forgotten basin. Enough to meet the yearly needs of 180 million people. Many thought it was madness. Why spend so much to save a lake buried deep in the desert, far from cities or farms? But this wasn't just water. It was survival. This lake stood as a living shield between two of Asia's largest deserts. When it dried up, forests fell, animals fled, and the sands began to move, threatening to merge into one endless sea of dust. What followed became one of the boldest ecological rescues on Earth, a fight to bring life back to where it had vanished. To understand the scale of this miracle, we must first see where this lake truly lies and why its existence defies nature itself. Deep in China's northwest, inside the vast region of Xinjiang, a river snakes across a land of extremes. This is the Tarim River, China's longest inland river, stretching more than 2,100 kilometers through scorching deserts and lonely valleys. It's not a single stream, but a lifeline made of 10 smaller rivers carrying snowmelt from the Tian Shan and Kunlun Mountains down into the Tarim Basin, one of the driest places on Earth. At the river's end lies Taitima Lake, small, quiet, and almost forgotten. Decades ago, it was known as the Tail Lake of the Tarim River, where all waters eventually gathered. At its peak, the lake spanned over 500 square kilometers, like a small inland sea teeming with reeds, birds, and life. But its beauty hides its fragility. Surrounded by the Taklamakan Desert to the north and the Kumtag Desert to the south, Taitima sits at the front line of an ecological war. If it dries, these two massive deserts will creep closer, threatening to merge into one. That's why saving this lake wasn't just about water. It was about protecting the last green barrier standing between two seas of sand. And to see how that barrier began to crumble, we need to look back to the slow death of a lake that once gave life to everything around it. For centuries, Taitema Lake had been a living heart in the desert, a rare oasis where rivers ended and life began. But nature here plays by cruel rules. Xinjiang's skies offer almost no rain, the sun burns with unrelenting heat, and every drop that reaches the basin is stolen back by evaporation. Over the decades, the rivers feeding Taitama grew weaker. Upstream, more water was diverted for farming in cities. Downstream, the lake began to shrink. The wetlands cracked. Reeds turned to dust. Fish died by the thousands. The migratory birds that once filled the sky, swans, herons, gulls, vanished, searching for water that no longer existed. Then the forests began to fall. The poplar trees, which had stood for centuries between the deserts, started to die. Their roots, once anchored in wet soil, found only sand. Without them, the wind grew stronger. Storms became fiercer. The land that once grew crops turned to dust and villages began to fade from the map. Taitama's death wasn't sudden. It was a slow collapse, one season at a time. But as the last pools dried up, a far greater danger was already forming on the horizon. The deserts were beginning to move. And when two deserts start to merge, it's not just a lake at risk, it's an entire region. By the late 1990s, satellite images revealed a terrifying sight the Taklamakan and Kumtag deserts were creeping toward each other, like two great beasts awakening from sleep. Between them lay a narrow green strip, a final defense of trees and grasslands surrounding the ghost of Taitama Lake. Each year the sands advanced. Entire villages were swallowed. Roads disappeared under dunes. The once fertile Tarim Basin began to resemble Mars, red, 
dry and lifeless. Winds carried dust thousands of kilometers east, darkening skies as far away as Beijing. Scientists warned that if the deserts merged, it would create the largest continuous desert on Earth, an environmental catastrophe capable of shifting regional climate patterns. Local farmers called it the silent invasion. Crops failed, wells ran dry, and livestock starved. Even the mighty Tarim River itself began to wither, its flow shrinking to a trickle in summer months. It was more than a crisis. It was a message. Nature was collapsing under human pressure, and China, facing an ecological tipping point, had a choice. Watch the desert consume everything, or fight back with an effort as massive as the land itself. That fight would become one of the most ambitious water restorations in human history. In 2000, China launched a plan so vast that even engineers called it a river reborn. The government ordered the Tarim River Ecological Water Transfer Project, a bold attempt to send water back to the dying south where Taitima Lake once shimmered. Massive channels were dug, gates and pumps were installed across thousands of kilometers. The goal released billions of cubic meters of water from upstream reservoirs and let the tarium flow freely again, even if just once a year. But it wasn't only about rehydrating a lake, it was about saving everything connected to it, the wetlands, the forests, the wildlife, and the people. Every drop sent downstream was a gamble against the desert's advance. The logistics were staggering. Workers endured 50 degrees Celsius heat to lay pipes across dunes. Convoys hauled machinery through landscapes where GPS often failed. Many experts doubted it would work. How could a vanished lake be brought back? How could one river fight two deserts? Yet, China persisted because doing nothing meant losing an entire ecosystem forever. And then, after decades of silence, something incredible happened. The lake began to breathe again. The first attempt came in May 2000. Engineers released 100 million cubic meters of water from the Daxi-Hazy Reservoir, hoping it would flow down the long, cracked riverbed and reach Titama Lake. But you know, the desert had other plans. The river channel, unused for decades, was clogged with silt and sand, with countless leaks hidden along its path. Within just a few kilometers, most of the water vanished, absorbed into the thirsty soil or evaporated under the scorching sun. By the time it had traveled 102 kilometers, it was gone. The lake remained parched. It was a humbling failure. Months of planning, billions of investment, and years of drought could not be undone with a single release. But the engineers didn't give up. They studied the failure carefully. They measured every leak, mapped every silted channel, and learned how the desert consumed water. From this first setback came a lesson. Restoring life to a dead lake would require patience, innovation, and relentless trial and error. And so began a series of increasingly sophisticated water deliveries, each one bringing hope that Taitima Lake might one day awaken. After the first failed attempt, engineers realized the river itself had become the enemy. Decades of neglect had transformed its channels into a patchwork of silted beds, collapsed banks, and hidden leaks. To bring water to Taitama, every section had to be restored, piece by piece. Workers dug tirelessly through desert heat, removing sand and sediment, repairing damaged canals, and sealing leaks that had been eating water for years. It was painstaking work, sometimes progress measured in meters, not kilometers. But you know, technology soon became their ally. The team introduced a new approach. Two river channels, small flow, multiple periods, long duration. Instead of dumping all the water at once, they sent it in smaller controlled flows through alternate channels over extended periods. This allowed water to seep slowly into parched soil, reducing loss and increasing efficiency. Every delivery became a lesson. Each failure informed the next attempt, turning frustration into knowledge. Slowly, the desert began to yield. A trickle became a stream. Streams became rivers. The lake's revival was no longer a dream. 
It was a carefully engineered reality, proving that with patience and innovation, even the harshest desert could be persuaded to give life again. After years of trial and error, the project began to gain momentum. By 2001, the second ecological water release pushed water over 200 kilometers downstream, double the distance of the first attempt. For the first time, hope returned. Over the next two decades, China conducted 24 major water deliveries, each one larger and more refined than the last. The volume grew from 100 million cubic meters to several hundred million cubic meters per release until, by 2024, more than 9 billion cubic meters had been delivered to Taitima Lake. To grasp that scale, imagine seven Great Salt Lakes worth of water funneled into a once-dead desert basin, or enough water to supply 180 million people for an entire year. It wasn't just engineering. It was a demonstration of relentless ambition. Every delivery was calculated to minimize waste, avoid evaporation, and ensure the water nourished the lake and surrounding ecosystems. Slowly, the dead channels were reborn into flowing rivers, and the parched soil began to drink. What had started as a cautious experiment had now become a colossal, life-giving campaign, showing that even the harshest deserts could be transformed with vision, persistence, and precision. After decades of work, Taitama Lake finally began to breathe again. Its surface now stretches around 88 square kilometers, and the surrounding wetlands have expanded to 223 square kilometers, more than double the lake itself. What was once dead earth now hums with life. Reeds sway in the wind, their roots drinking from waters that had vanished for 40 years. Poplar trees, once dried and cracked, now push tender green buds toward the sun. In some areas, new forest belts are forming, creating a natural barrier against the advancing deserts. The wildlife followed. Migratory birds, swans, gulls, and ducks have returned to breed and roost. Fish have recolonized the waters, and insects and amphibians are slowly rebuilding the food chain. Every spring and autumn, flocks circle the lake in a dance of life, filling the air with motion and sound. This is more than water restored. It is an ecosystem resurrected. Slowly, Taitima Lake has gone from a barren wasteland to a vibrant desert oasis, a living testament to the power of persistence, engineering, and vision. And yet, this revival wasn't just about nature. It also reshaped the lives of the people who depend on it. The revival of Taitima Lake didn't just change the landscape, it changed lives. Local farmers who once watched their wells run dry now see water returning to their fields. Crops that struggled to survive are growing again. Villagers who had abandoned homes near the desert edge are returning, rebuilding communities that seemed lost. Elders tell stories of the past of reeds taller than a man, flocks of birds darkening the sky, and poplar forests stretching for miles. For them, the lake's rebirth is a return of memory, hope, and pride. Younger generations born during the lake's dry years now witness a miracle they never knew, a green oasis surrounded by golden sands. Livelihoods are coming back too. Fishermen can harvest again, herders find grass for livestock, and the local climate is improving. Even dust storms, once frequent and harsh, have eased thanks to the returning vegetation. This human dimension proves that ecological restoration is not just about saving nature, it's about restoring communities, culture, and survival. And while lives are being restored, the next question emerges, was all this investment worth it? Bringing Taitama Lake back from the brink came at a staggering cost, over 10 billion yuan and decades of planning, engineering, and labor. Critics asked, was it really worth it? Could that water have been better used elsewhere? The answer lies in the benefits, both visible and invisible. The lake now protects the region from the merging of the Taklamakan and Kumtag deserts. Its revived wetlands act as a natural air filter, reducing dust storms that once spread across hundreds of kilometers. The forests have returned, stabilizing soil and preventing desertification. Wildlife is coming back, and local communities have regained livelihoods. 
Beyond economics, there's a lesson in ecological foresight. One dry lake could have triggered a cascade of environmental collapse, farmland lost, rivers diminished, and sandstorms worsening climate conditions. The cost of inaction would have been far higher. Taitema shows that large-scale ecological investment is not just charity for nature, it's insurance, protecting life, land, and future generations. And this success isn't just a local story. Taitama Lake is more than a local miracle. It's a global model for reviving deserts. The strategies used here show that even the harshest landscapes can recover with vision, persistence, and careful engineering. Key lessons stand out. First, small controlled water deliveries over time are far more effective than one-time floods. Second, restoring river channels and preventing leakage is as critical as the water itself. Third, ecological restoration must combine engineering with biodiversity, ensuring wetlands, forests, and wildlife recover together. Across the world, regions facing desertification, from Africa's Sahel to Australia's arid zones, can learn from Taitama. It proves that large-scale human intervention, when guided by science and patience, can transform landscapes once considered beyond saving. This lake also teaches a deeper lesson. Ecosystems are resilient, but only if humans are willing to act decisively and consistently. One river, one lake, one desert oasis at a time, the lessons of Taitema could help turn back the march of deserts across the planet. And now, as we witness this miracle, it's clear that the story of Tatama Lake isn't finished. It's just beginning. Tatama Lake was once a dead patch of sand and cracked earth. Today, it glimmers like a jewel in the desert. Reeds sway, poplars bud, and flocks of birds dance across the water. What was once lost has been reborn, a testament to vision, perseverance, and the extraordinary power of human determination. This isn't just a lake coming back to life. It's a story of ecosystems saved, communities revived, and deserts held at bay. It's proof that even the harshest landscapes can be healed when science, patience, and courage collide. If you've been inspired by Taitama's revival, there's more to explore. Subscribe to the channel to follow our deep dives into incredible ecological projects, environmental breakthroughs, and human stories that shape our planet. Because just like Taitama, every ecosystem has a chance, if someone is willing to fight for it. Look at this oasis and remember, life can return to the places we once thought were lost forever.